We're doing a series on restoring this axe. And we promised a little extra video on rust inhibiting coatings going forward. This is it. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the workshop on a horrible rainy day. I'm sorry if you can hear the rain on the tin roof in the background. We'll do our best. This series is about restoring axes and general skills in the maintenance and care of axes. This axe, specifically. In part one, we looked at selecting a vintage axe and how to remove any damage to the helve or the pole that it might come with. In part two, we looked at de-rusting techniques. Part three covered the right geometry for an axe and part four was all about sharpening. In the sharpening though, we damaged the patina, the forced oxidization that we put on this axe head. So we popped it back in an acid bath to top that up. Today's episode is all about how do we keep this relatively rust resistant going forward. Let's take a look where we're up to. Here's our project axe then. You probably remember that these smooth areas that got abraded during the sharpening process were bright steel. After 48 hours in an acid bath, they're now a dull sort of gunmetal grey. And that's because the action of the acid has caused a molecular change in the surface of the steel. It's often referred to as a forced patina. You can think of it almost as chemical rusting, but in a safe way. And of course, once the iron atoms are bound into molecules, they're much less likely to rust. So we've imbued a great level of protection already to the axe head. In a forge, if this is being made new, often a black coating is put on by rubbing beeswax and effectively burning it onto the surface of the steel, all in seed oil or a number of other finishes very similar to seasoning cast iron. But in effect, it's a chemical coating that's burned onto the surface of the steel. With modern axes, a good spray paint provides a barrier, and there's nothing wrong with that. We could do that to this axe. But what I'm gonna do is put a hard wax coating over the surface. And part of that is because the hard wax will fill in the pitting here and prevent things like tree sap getting stuck in that pitting and causing rusting. So that's the next process we're going to do after we give a light sharpen to the bevel. So all I'm doing here is creating an area that is the bevel to be kept sharp as distinct from the axe head to be kept rust free. So we're creating something maybe a centimetre, half an inch wide, just along the edge that's nice and sharp, nice and shiny, and effectively forms the cutting part of the axe. So that's a nice shiny sharp bevel on the axe head and a patina on the rest of it to give a measure of rust protection. Now I'm gonna paint it with wax. In order to do that, I'll melt the wax with a double boiler. If you wanna know more about the use of waxes and double boilers and the properties of various things, we have a series on making household products. And that covers everything from subtle soap to furniture polish and the techniques and the properties associated with them. So I don't intend to go into all of those here. But what I will do is hang the axe on a string over an old cloth, melt the waxes, paint them on, and that'll fill in any of those little pop marks and divots and you know rust areas and ensure that the axe head is smooth and protected. The wax we're going to use is a combination of two waxes and we're going to use something called Caranuba wax which are these shiny flakes because it's a hard wax and beeswax because it gives a measure of softness and elasticity and the combination of the two means it won't abrade quite as quickly but it won't shatter if something scratches it. Let's have a look at melting the wax and how we paint it on. There we go then. And all I've put in here, we don't need much. In fact, I've got an excess here. 
but I've got 10 grams of each wax. That's plenty for our purposes. Five grams of each would probably have been more than sufficient, but I hate running out in the middle of a job. So I'm gonna leave that in the double boiler over the boiling water until it melts. You can see already that it's starting to melt, but I won't make you sit through the whole melting process. Now, we've diluted our wax with mineral oil, baby oil to us Brits. And that's because if we try and put the wax on solidly, just as pure wax, it will become hard and brittle. So we need to almost plasticize it and reduce it. And honestly, I've tried this several times and I've tried to come up with a formula and I've failed. Add some oil, put it on. If the wax forms just a hard, brittle coating, add a bit more oil, scrape off what you put on the axe head and try again. I didn't add enough oil to start with this time. So let's have another go. Get this. That's better. Now you can see it goes on as a relatively thin coat. If you get it too thick, what's going to happen is it's going to go on and instantly set and form a very hard, very brittle coating. Now I know this looks a bit odd and I know this is probably counterintuitive. We're going to rub a lot of that wax off later but what we're doing is allowing it to set up in all those areas of pitting and I do like doing this with these natural products so what we'll do in a bit is rub that down with a cloth when it's set and what we're almost doing is equivalent of protecting your furniture with a furniture polish the formula of this is not wildly different than a beeswax polish. It's just that what we're not doing is putting something like linseed oil in, which would, of course, nourish wood, but isn't necessary, or metal. All I'm doing now is rubbing up the surface, and rubbing off the excess wax to create a dull shine and it feels a bit like waxed furniture. What gave me the idea for this is this stuff. Renaissance wax. And this is used in museums to conserve and protect leather, wood and metal. And I thought, well, if it's good enough for the British Museum and others, then it's good enough for our old axe head. So let's get going on the other side now, aren't I? After two minutes of buffing, we've got a completely waxed head. The wax has settled into any of the areas of pitting and set hard and formed a protected barrier over the rest of the axe. It's not permanent, but if you're going to do a hard day in the field, take a small jar of axe wax with you. You don't have to melt it now, that's only for the first application. And just take a cloth, give it a good rub over and it'll protect the axe head better than oil or grease wood because it adheres better to the metal. Our axe head is had damage repaired, it's been de-rusted, it's been profiled, it's been sharpened and it's been protected. There's only one thing we've got left to do, fit a new health. And we'll do that in the next episode. And if you want to know when that episode's out, just click the subscribe and the bell next to it down below and you'll hear every time we publish a new video. If you've enjoyed today's, could you do us a favour? Just give us a thumbs up and maybe leave us a comment. That'd be absolutely great. But whatever you do, come back and see us soon. You take care.